the stated of objective of SAMHSA is that of helping South Africa to have a vibrant maritime economy. Now, SAMHSA itself um, is a maritime authority. So you want to be a model maritime authority that supports that work. Now, being a model maritime authority needs you to have all the correct tools of trade, requires you to have all the correct legislation, requires you to have every instrument that you require. Now, the maritime sector in itself, it's governed internationally, and um, SAMSA participates in two particular forums. One is the International Maritime Organization. More importantly, where welfare issues are concerned, the other one is the International Labour Organization. Now, at an international level, it has been established that um, fishers are the most vulnerable where it comes to workers. Fishing takes place out at sea. Nobody sees, nobody hears anything. Now all the abuses um, go unreported and this is an international phenomenon. And SAMHSA has taken upon itself then to make sure that we become part of the international campaign that addresses the situation, that confronts these ills that are taking place. Now, why do you want to do that? We want to do that because fishing as a sector is the biggest cons constituency at SAMHSA. We have more fishing vessels than any other type of vessels. We have more employment out of the fishing industry, more than any other employment that we derive in uh, international logistics, etc. So it is important for us then that we are part of a sustainable fishing sector. So how does SAMSA do its work? We partner. We partner amongst government. You will find here that we have Department of Labor. We've got, um, they are called Employment and Labor, let me be correct. We've got uh, the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries. Those are mainly our partners. We are at a university of uh, Nelson Mandela University and we have a partner here called Saimi and they are our partners. Now each one of these partners have a role to play but most importantly our international affiliations bring here the International Labour Organization who are sponsoring the work that we do. Uh, and the, the fishing uh, itself then has to be promoted so that it plays its part in the economy. There are issues of sustainability, but there are issues of jobs, and those jobs must be decent jobs. And this is the reason then we hoped we would um, want to co-sponsor, if not um, take a lead on the work that is happening, that of ensuring that um, we detect, um, confront, and prevent all the abuses in the fishing sector. The workshop itself is focused on forced labor. I think that's the specific focus of the uh, workshop. We've got 30 officials from across the departments that you've um, um, enumerated. Why forced labor specifically? Do we have prevalence of forced labor in South Africa in your understanding from a SAMSA perspective? Yes, we do. Remember, forced labor in international labor terms is um, it, it's got a criteria. You can have people going to work, but them having to accept less than optimal conditions, if not illegal. Them being forced to endure a situation that should not be allowed in law makes it forced labor. And we do have those instances. And um, even 
as we have not done the complete research, uh, we know that there is prevalence, maybe in South Africa, because we've got um, better labor laws. Um, the, these things are, um, they, 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 they are hidden, uh, get given names, but the fact of the matter is it is a problem that exists and uh, we need to confront it. Now, the, the other constituency we didn't mention here is that of organized labor and fishers themselves because they are participating. Now, we set up um, around 2010, 2009, 2010, what we called a South African uh, fishing forum. And that had all the constituencies, the various um, um, uh, participants within the fisheries that constitute the South African fishing sector, labor, and other arms of government. We've covered a lot of work uh, in that regard, but there's still a long way to go. And as I'm saying, the importance of this work, or rather the need is created by the very fact that it is possible that once a ship leaves the port, anything that happens on board a ship uh, is what um, you do not know. So it is important that you play an even more vigilant role um, in terms of ensuring that people come and tell in case anything happened in the 21 days that they were out at sea. Um, I've come to understand that um, the Department of Employment and Labor is now increasing its own capacity and the role that it's now going to be played. And linked to that is a memorandum, memorandum of understanding with SAMHSA. Could you speak to that in terms of what it entails and how it's going to benefit both? Uh, the Labor Relations Act uh, and, and the Basic Conditions of Employment Act are specifically excluded um, where it comes to issues of maritime employment because those issues are contained in the Merchant Shipping Act. So anybody working on a ship, they are employed not in terms of the Labor Relations Act, but in terms of um, um, the, 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 the Merchant Shipping Act. There are those elements then that uh, bring back the Labor Relations and the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. But by and large, um, that, that, that is the instrument that you need. Now, we are one government, and in our assessment of the amount of work there is to be done, uh, it became apparent that the collaboration with Department of Employment and Labor would serve us quite well. They've got established labor inspectors. We have a lot of fleet, and uh, we can do with their hand uh, in ensuring that they help us weed all those undesirable practices within the fishing sector. And that was the um, origin of the memorandum of understanding that we entered into. There are issues of um, capacity building. They need to understand the Merchant Shipping Act as a foundational act on which they must act. Uh, they need to be given certain powers to be able to discharge that work in terms of the Merchant Shipping Act. We depend on them. We also depend, by the way, on uh, environment, uh, forestry and fisheries because some of them have got the right to arrest. We don't. So there is a big collaboration that we have started because it is going to take all those instruments coming together if we're going to win the fight against um, forced labor or any other um, malpractices within the labor environment. From a SAMHSA perspective, we've been, as SAMHSA, we've been focused on safety of vessels, safety of people at sea. And according to some cell reports, this organization has done tremendous work over the last decade or two. How do you 
then combine these two things to ensure that A, we don't lose the momentum that we have made from a safety of people and property at sea perspective with improving working conditions. In other words, is there a chance that we could be distracted from one to the other? No. The, the, all of this work goes together. Remember, SAMSA regulates over the ship, over how it's operated. It regulates even over accommodation or even food that people get fed while on the ship. So the welfare element is a big element from a safety perspective of a ship. Remember, a crew that has suboptimal welfare conditions cannot be deemed to be a safe crew. So we've always maintained that balance. Um, it's taken a lot of work to bring to the attention of ship owners that the integrity of the ship must be overboard all the time. The ship must be adequately serviced, maintained. Uh, the crew must be adequately trained. And we may not have always emphasized the need to test the, the, the welfare elements. That somebody is trained does not mean that they are in a state of mind to be able to work. So those welfare elements play a very, very big part in the work that we do. IMO has recognized that there are accidents that when we've investigated, it turned out that these people did not rest these people had suboptimal living conditions on board. They were not properly um, um, fed. So all this work um, is going to have to be done with all these collaborations, as I'm saying. But more importantly, it is when we've done the complete work that uh, we're going to win this fight. You must um, recall that SAMSA created a standalone welfare office so that we start a forecast approach. So you've always had a, an established survey department. Surveyors go on ship, they know how to inspect the ship, look at the safety, physical elements of the ship. They know how to test for competence of those that are employed on the ship, training, etc. And um, it occurred to us that we needed to strengthen our welfare side of, of things. So we employed, um, we, we started a complete unit with a manager. Um, I do know now that uh, we employ some psychologists. We've got um, arrangements to insource that um, service of, of psychological support when it's be. So when you've got an incident, for instance, uh, we had a recent fishing incident um, just down uh, south uh, in, in Cape St. Francis where once those people were saved, were taken away from the ship, we needed to deploy um, counselling services and we needed to manage those people into a path, path of recovery because it is important if they should go back to sea, you need to make sure that this ordeal has been successfully dealt with in their minds. So uh, we've established, as I'm saying, the welfare division because it is that important and goes together with the effort that we're trying to create. Just to wrap it up and also broaden it by alluding to what you referred to earlier as an international element to this. Um, it reminds me all that we have Convention 188 and Convention 190 in terms of the International Labour Organization. But on the other hand, we have the Cape Town Agreement, which looks into the actual structure, development of the vessels and that kind of thing. Why I'm bringing this um, into the question, it's in terms of our level of readiness from a regulatory perspective. Do we have the regulations necessary to actually ensure that we achieve what we are doing? Um, you asked me earlier about the MOU between the Department of Environment, uh, sorry, Employment and Labour and SAMSA. Um, and I did mention the one part that they would help us 
to ensure compliance by deploying their inspectors. The other element is that that work that requires legislation coming out of the International Labour Organization is led by the Department of Employment and Labour. So they are the ones that go and ratify those conventions from a, an, a, a, an ILO point of view. And um, we have now, there is one convention, I think it's Convention 190, that we still need your local legislation to implement that. Uh, from a, a, an IMO perspective, remember this discussion started at IMO being the Work in Fishing Convention, which started um, in the middle to the end of the 1980s, went all the way that in the 90s uh, we went to Torremolinos in Spain where we had a Torremolinos protocol to that to work in fishing convention. But it took a long time to make it come into force. And um, it took another 20 years by the time we got to Cape Town to make it the Cape Town Convention, which looks at the condition of the vessel uh, which looks at the um, physical structure, uh, including some elements that pertain to welfare. So, and those elements are now included as regulations in the Merchant Shipping Act. So we've got adequate instruments for now to, to help us go a long way. What we do not have are those elements that will uh, deal with this uh, forced labor, etc. Because that must come with all the subsequent conventions coming out of the International Labor Organization and hence the discussion we're having with the Department of Employment and Labor. Mr. Tumai, uh, thank you very much for your time. Truly appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much.